Hi guys, I wanted to show you a little bit about um, what we're going to be doing in the lab this week. So we're going to be measuring a nonlinear device, sort of similar to what we did last week with the resistor, but this time it'll be a, an LED. And we'll be modeling the behavior of the LED and trying to uh, infer its characteristics based on the data that we collect. So it's a, it's a little bit more complex, not too bad. Um, so let me go ahead and uh, share my screen with you, and then let's let's look at what that's going to look like in code. Now I'm going to drag a uh, let's see an Arduino Uno. Now we're not this is this is what's available on uh, Tinkercad. It's not the same uh, device we'll be using in the lab, but it's got the same programming environment. So what I want to do is set things up so that we don't have to change too much. When we get to programming, the actual device will be will be programming. So, um, I think most of you have probably programmed an Arduino before. It's programmed in a language that's sort of very similar to C plus plus slash C, depending on exactly uh, what features you use. So, we're we're going to pretend like it's just C and use the features that of C programming that you learned in. Um, CSCI 155. There are some functions that are available in the libraries associated with the Arduino that weren't in the libraries that you use. The standard runtime library of C doesn't have any ability to measure voltage or control a pin. So there are some functions related to that and also to get the current time and etc. Um, there are functions that are related to those things, excuse me, that we'll be using. I can, and I'll be introducing you to those as we go. So the first thing to notice is that here we have ground pins, we have power pins, and we have uh, logic pins. Now the, the Arduino Uno is a 5 volt device. That means that when you send a pin high, it goes to 5 volts. When you set it low, it goes to 0 volts. The devices we're using are 3.3 volt devices. So that means that when you set a pin high on these guys, it only goes to 3.3 volts. And when you set it low, it goes to 0 volts. Also on an Arduino Uno, when you measure a voltage with an analog pin, you get a number between 0 and 1023 that represents a voltage between 0 and 5 volts, and, and it scales proportionally. On the device we're using, the maximum voltage is 2 volts, not 5 volts, and unlike the Arduino that only goes up to 1023, our goes, ours goes up to 16,000 something, um, 2 to the 14 minus 1. So uh, it's a, the numbers will be slightly different, but the concept is nonetheless the same. So um, let's go ahead and I want to begin by describing for you a, a pulse width modulated voltage. Now PWM, that's one of our learning outcomes for you guys to understand PWM. So last week we looked at voltage dividers and how those work. This week we're going to expand a little bit and look at PWM. We're also going to look at analog to digital conversion. So those are sort of the new big concepts for the week. What I want to do is uh, let's open the code editor. I'm going to choose text for the code editor because that's what we'll be using almost entirely. Um, and the default program you get, as you guys know from, well, I don't know, you didn't actually use an Arduino last week. So the default program you get has a setup function and a loop function. The setup function, it runs once at the beginning and the loop function is called forever. So basically it just gets called over and over again. Um, as soon as it exits, it gets called again. And so um, right now this program sets pin 13 to be an output. That's what pin mode does. You can make pins outputs or you can make them inputs. Uh, this sets it to be an output. Pin 13, it turns out, is also connected to this LED. So when you set pin 13 high, the LED comes on. And when you set pin 13 low, the LED goes off. So you can see what's happening here. We're writing pin, digital write sets pin 13 either high or low. This particular command sets it high. And then uh, we wait for a thousand milliseconds, which is the same as a second. And then we write it low and wait for another thousand milliseconds. So if you just run the code that comes for free, you'll notice the light just comes on and off. Okay, very exciting. Um, now, we're actually going to be using not pin 13, but pin 6. So what I want to do is to pound define um, output. 
to 6. If you didn't use pound define in your CSCI 125 class, it's okay. Um, it's just a way to define a constant that you can use in the program. I want to do this because uh, sometimes when we switch between Tinkercad and the actual Arduinos that we'll be using, the they're not really Arduinos, they're SparkFun Artemis Nanos, but they're the same basic idea. They use the same IDE or development environment. Uh, so I want to be able to copy and paste code from here into there and not have to change very much. So instead of uh, um, instead of using raw numbers in the code, I want to use symbols that then can be, I can set at the symbol at the beginning of the program and I can change the pin I'm using. So that's the idea. So uh, let's let's go ahead and set this to output. Oh, but that's not good. Let's define this as out pin. And then we'll make this out pin. Output is already is already used as a constant. Um, the other thing I want to do is, well, let's just do one thing at a time here. Then instead of digital write, I want to do analog write. And I'll explain here what that means. Analog write, out pin, and I'm going to set it to 127. And then, uh, actually, we can just set that there. And then we can just make the loop function empty. And then I can run the code. So now notice the LED is not flashing anymore. And not much else is happening. Pin 6. Now, the fact that pin 6 can do PWM is indicated here. It's got a little tilde next to it, which means it's PWM capable. But, uh, but nothing's happening there. So what the heck? Um, let's see if we can see what's happening. What I want to do is go back to, uh, let's close off the code and open up the, I want to open all components. And I'll go down here and grab an oscilloscope. And so we need to learn how to use oscilloscopes in this class. You guys will be using them in the lab. They're basically a way to look at time-dependent voltages. So I want to take the negative terminal, connect it to the ground pin on the Arduino, and then we're going to take the positive terminal, come over here to pin 6, and then run the simulation again. And you'll notice that that pin is going up and down. Let's look at the oscilloscope. It's 100 milliseconds per division. Let's change it to 10 milliseconds per division. Restart. How oh, isn't that odd? Hang on a second. There we go. One millisecond per division. There we go. So, um, so this is showing 10 milliseconds across the whole screen. And you'll notice that there are one, two, three, four. Well, look, it looks like the thing goes through about one oscillation per division. So that means um, this particular case, it looks like it's about a kilohertz, a kilohertz of, um, that's one, two, three, four, five. Yep, it's about a kilohertz. And you'll notice it's 20 volts top to bottom. So that means it's two volts per division here. So two, four, and half a division would be five. So it's a five volt signal. And it's oscillating at approximately a kilohertz. <clears throat> now, um, let's stop it. And then let's go to the code. And I'm going to change this from 127 to 13. Run it again. And you'll notice it's a similar kind of thing. But look, the pulses are much, much narrower. Let's change this to uh, 0.1 milliseconds per division. So that's approximately half of a tenth of a millisecond. So that's a twentieth of a millisecond. So 50 microseconds. If I bump this up to um, from 13, let's make it 26. Stop the simulation. 26. Look, it's now it's a full division. So uh, interesting. So it's the number we put here 
determines how long that pulse is high. Um, it's okay. Oh, I see. It's one millisecond all the way across here is what it's saying. Good. So it's a tenth of a millisecond per division. So that's a hundred microseconds, not 50 microseconds. Now it's a hundred microseconds. So um, let's try the following thing. We'll start it out at zero. And then let's define a variable called uh, int pwm. Start it at zero. And then what I want to do is every time in the loop, we're going to say pwm plus equals one. We're going to increment it by one. And then we're going to send that out analog right out pin pwm now. So we're going to use this variable to change the output. But I want to, uh, oh, I need a semicolon. But I want to wait now and look at that for a second. So I'm going to say delay uh, maybe 100 milliseconds, right? And the other thing I want to do is if the if we've reached the maximum value of P, the PWM uh, number, then I want to restart it at zero. It turns out the maximum value is 255. So 127 is about half of the maximum value. So I'm going to say if PWM, if it's greater than or equal to 255, then that means we need to reset it to zero. So we're going to say PWM equals um, actually, let's set it to negative one, and then when it gets back in the loop, it'll increment it and write it, and that will, um, or no. You know, there's different ways to skin a cat. We'll just do it this way. And then, uh, okay. So I want it the first time through, I want it to write a zero, then increment, then it's going to check, and it's going to keep doing that. Um, and I'll just say, if it gets greater than 255 here, we're going to reset it to zero. That'll set it back to zero, and then uh, and keep going. Okay, so let's try this. And then I want you to notice, every time through the loop, it's incrementing the PWM, and that's making this pulse width larger and larger and larger. So it's just going to keep getting bigger. Of course, it's taking a while. The simulation is not as fast as real life. Um, but I hope you get the idea. Now, here's the thing. What's the average voltage? Well, it's five volts for this period of time, and then it's zero volts for the whole rest of the time, and then it repeats. So the average voltage is five volts times the amount of time that it's high divided by the total time. Now, the time that it's high divided by the total time, that's called the duty cycle. That's the fraction of the time that the PWM signal is high. If that fraction is 50%, that means it's high half the time. If it's 10%, it's high a tenth of the time. If it's 90%, that means it's high 90% of the time. Okay? Now, uh, it turns out the value 255, which is the maximum value you can assign in the Arduino IDE, uh, corresponds to being on all the time. That's a 100% duty cycle. 127 is about a 50% duty cycle. Uh, a tenth of that is about a 5% duty cycle. So you'll see that um, as the number gets bigger and bigger, uh, it's the pulse is going to get longer and longer, the duty cycle is going to go up, and the average voltage is going to go up. So what we're going to do is to add a RC circuit to this output, and that RC circuit is going to effectively average this voltage over a cycle and what we'll, what we'll actually measure then at the output of that RC circuit is just the average voltage. So we can use this PWM signal to adjust the voltage at, at a different part of our circuit. OK. OK. <clears throat> what I'd like to do is to add an RC circuit to this setup to mimic what we're going to be doing in lab this week. 
So let's go ahead and grab a breadboard and uh, we'll grab, let's see, put this down here. I'll get a ground from here and connect it to the ground uh, rail. And then uh, let's get a resistor. Oops, too far. <clears throat> and I'll get a capacitor. And while I'm over here, I might as well grab an LED because I'm going to need one of those in a minute. And I'm going to need another resistor in a minute too. So I'll just get those over here, leave them off the board for now, but we'll have them handy. So what I want to do is uh, not go just to the oscilloscope with pin 6, but I want pin 6 to drive the circuit. So I'm going to bring pin 6 over here, let's say down like this, and then put it in the high voltage side or the upstream side of the resistor. The downstream side of the resistor I'm going to connect to the upstream side of the capacitor and the downstream side of the capacitor I'm just going to bring all the way down here to ground. Uh, while I'm at it I'm going to copy make a jumper to ground up here because I'm going to need another oscilloscope in a minute and I'll need a place to, to put its ground. So I'm just going to go ahead and get that done now. Um, oh, and I've got to connect this oscilloscope somewhere. So let's use, we'll just monitor the PWM signal with this guy. Same thing we were doing before. Okay, so if I run this thing, it, it's going to do exactly what it was doing before. The PWM, PWM signal is still there. It's still increasing its duty cycle by one part in 255 every 100 milliseconds or something like that. Does that sound right? Yes. Okay. Let's get another oscilloscope and see what's happening at the other side of this resistor now. <clears throat> I need all. And there's another oscilloscope. Let's, uh, so the positive terminal, I'm going to connect to the high voltage side of the capacitor. The negative terminal, I'm just going to come down here and connect it to ground. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> that should be good. Let's see what it does. Now one thing you'll notice is that sometimes the oscilloscopes in Tinkercad can be goofy. So this one is doing something. It's kind of hard to tell what's going on but until you realize that it's got its time base set to one second so these are 100 millisecond um, periods here, but this is one millisecond. So uh, this is, it's way under sampling the signal. So that means what we need to do is come in here and set this to something more like um, 0.5 milliseconds, something that it's close to the, there we go. Now you can see what's going on. <clears throat> the output voltage is, uh, It's jumping around. The average, notice it's charging almost all the way up to 5 volts. In fact, it looks like, um, yeah, it almost charges all the way up to 5 volts, but then it quickly discharges. And so the average voltage is pretty low. Um, but this is useless as a, it's not anywhere near a DC voltage. It's not a constant voltage. It's doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And the reason is the RC time constant of the circuit is small compared to the period of the PWM waveform. So we need to ch increase the RC time constant of the circuit in order for this thing to be useful to us uh, to calculate to produce a voltage that's the average voltage. So let's stop the simulation and let's bump this guy. It's a tenth of a microfarad. So let's take it up to 10 microfarads. <clears throat> okay. Now that's looking a lot better. So now it's, uh, but you still, it's, you can still see a charging and discharging, but now the time constant is long compared to the period of the PWM, and so it's much less jaggedy. But it's still kind of jaggedy. So let's uh, take it one step farther, go up to 100 microfarads, and now it's doing something weird. The oscilloscopes in Tinkercad can be kind of weird. So you just sort of, sometimes you have to sort of have to wait and 
see what happens. The real oscilloscopes we'll be using in the lab are much nicer. Okay, so now it's doing something sensible. It's almost completely flat. It's the average of this voltage right now. Um, it's one volt. The whole oscilloscope is one volt. So these are tenths of a volt. So it's heading up to 0.4 volts. Now it's above 0.4. It's probably going to rescale. Okay, it just rescaled to 2 volts all the whole thing. So that means these are each 0.2 volts. 0 0.2, 0 0.4. This is 0 0.6 volts. So now it's getting up close to 0 0.6 volts. <clears throat> so this is behaving itself. Here's the problem. If I try to drive an LED with this circuit, this 1,000 ohms is going to come in and get me because the LED <clears throat> needs 5 or 10 milliamps to light up, and that means 1,000 ohms, you'd need to have um, something like 10 volts across the 1,000 ohms in order to get to 10 milliamps, and there's nothing left for the LED. The LED needs a couple of volts itself, so you'd need a 12-volt supply with 1,000 ohm resistance in order to light up an LED. So that's not going to happen. So we need to reduce the resistance of this guy down to something a little more usable, like 330 ohms maybe. Okay, that's, that's going to improve the situation to some degree, but the problem with that is, if I then look at this, now I've got jaggies again. Okay, so I, I, I don't like those jaggies. I need to increase the capacitance of the capacitor to make up for the fact that I had to reduce the size of the resistor. So I'm going to make this a thousand microfarads. Okay, and that's what you'll be using in the lab. Now if we go back and look, <clears throat> again, ignore the goofiness for the first few uh, seconds as the simulation gets its head screwed on, but as soon as it figures out that, oh, that's a capacitor, it needs to be able to charge. Um, you'll see that you've got, again, a fairly flat uh, Well, There we go. So now it's cleaned up its act, finally. Okay, so now it's looking pretty good. And the jaggies are mostly gone. Okay? So here's the other problem. I need a... If I just put a LED in here, <clears throat> I could do it, but then there would be current flowing. If you think about the circuit, this point would connect to the LED to ground. It's also connected to this capacitor to ground, so the LED and the capacitor will be in parallel. And the current, if I measure the current, calculate the voltage drop across the 330, divide by, you know, 330 to get the current through the 330, that's the current through the capacitor plus the LED. I want just the LED. So I need another resistor. But it's it's got to be a pretty small resistor because if I make it too big, again, I've got the same problem I had before. I won't be able to... Um, like the LED because the resistor is too big. So what I need to do is to make it fairly small. I'm going to, for, for the purposes of Tinkercad, I'm going to just put in 100 ohms. That's not what you're going to be able to use because I don't have 100 ohm in your kit. Um, but you want to do something fairly small, sort of on that scale. So I'm going to connect the low voltage end of the resistor to the anode of the LED, and then the cathode of the LED we're going to just bring down near to ground. Okay. So that should work. And then, uh, yeah, that should be it. So let's start the simulation. Again, it's going to do its goofy thing at the beginning. But after a little bit, it should uh, start to behave itself. So the only problem with this, this is pretty much the circuit you guys are going to build, except that the capacitor doesn't look like this. It's not a, it's a dielectric um, so it's big round cylindrical thing. It's also polarized, so that means it's got a negative terminal and a positive terminal, so you need to make sure you get those in the right order. But you can see it's, uh, it's doing fine in terms of uh, having a nice flat behavior. So, um, so that's working out okay. But one thing we're not doing is we're not measuring any voltages. So what we need to do is to get some measurement happening here. I need to measure the voltage at the high end of this 100 ohms and at the low end of this 100 ohms. Um, and then I need to measure the voltage drop across the diode, which is the difference between here and here. But I'd already be measuring that if I'm getting the voltage at the low end of the 100 ohms. So I really need two voltages, the voltage here and the voltage here. So let's grab those guys. So I'm going to take a zero, come over here. 
I'm going to get with that the voltage across the diode. So let's bring that there. And then A1, I'm going to use that to get the voltage of the capacitor, the voltage drop across the 100 ohms. So I'll come to here and then to there. Okay. <clears throat> so this guy is A1. Let's make it uh, blue just for grins. This one is A0. Let's make it uh, what? Brown. Okay, blue and brown. And then these are all my grounds. Just to make it clean, I'll make these guys black. This is ground. This is ground. This is ground. Uh, let's see, this is my PWM. So what are we not used yet? Let's call that guy orange. This is also my PWM. Make that orange. This is the same as blue here. This is the voltage at the top of the capacitor. So I'll make all those guys blue, just so you know they're all the same. And then this one is black, so that's ground. <clears throat> there you go. Beautiful. Now let's get some measurement done. So two things I need to do. I need to set up the serial port so I can send this data to the computer. So I'm going to say serial.begin and we'll just use 9600 bits per second. That's the standard default bit rate. And then down here after I delay, I want to, let me turn this off for now. Uh, do I have a do not disturb somewhere up here? Hmm, I guess not. Okay, it's not like... Okay. Um, let's do a uh, serial dot print. I want to print out the PWM value. I'm going to print out a comma. And then we're going to do that two more times because we're going to print out the A0 and we're going to print out A1. And the only difference is when we print out A1, we don't need another comma because that's the last thing we're going to print. So we'll change that to a print line. And then, oh my golly. Okay. And then here, I don't want to print out PWM again. I want to analog read A0. Here I'm going to analog read A1. Sound good? So we'll run that guy. Doesn't like something. Uh, a serial function loop. I expected a... Oh, I need another close parenthesis here and here. doing its thing. Let's watch the serial monitor. <clears throat> now it's still getting its head screwed on with regard to the capacitor, but it's going to figure it out here in a second, I promise. Or I hope it will. Come on. There it goes. Finally it figured out there's a capacitor there. And then now we're going to... Okay, so it looks like A1 is working. But there's something wrong with A0. A0. It's getting a Z. Oh, I see. Okay, I didn't measure the right place. I should have put it up here. Okay. So now, as soon as it gets its head screwed on, I don't know what it's doing at the beginning. It doesn't like those capac that, that capacitor. It doesn't like to think of it as being chargeable for some reason. But uh, as soon as it gets its head screwed on with regard to that capacitor, there it goes. Okay, so now we have measurements right. Okay, perfect. So these numbers, what do they mean? 8, 4, 12, 16. So the idea is that um, you're measuring 
an analog voltage with an A to D converter that has so many bits of precision. In this particular case with the Arduino Uno, you've got 10 bits of precision, which means the number is between 0 and 1023. 1023 corresponds to 5 volts, 0 corresponds to 0 volts, so you need to do a linear conversion between those two voltages. Um, there's a map function in the Arduino library that converts a, does a linear conversion between any two ranges, but it's a little overkill for this particular problem because we know it's, it's just 5 volts is 1023. So we can just take the number, multiply by 5, and divide by 1023. So take 100 on this scale. So if you do that, let's just go to, uh, let's go to, uh, right, I was just doing this a minute ago. So if I take 100 on that scale, I can just see what the number is going to be. It's 100 times 5 divided by 1023. So that's going to be 0 0.48 volts. So that's about half a volt. And I hit the wrong key, so I closed my simulation, but you get the idea. So this is printing <clears throat> the PWM value. It's printing analog read A0, analog read A1, and this that's how the circuit has to work. With the exception of the fact that we don't actually have a 100 ohm resistor for you guys to use, you'll need to find a similar something close enough to work. Um, but there is something in your kit that's between a between 100 and 300 that should be adequate for these purposes. You do probably want to use a red diode because the limitation on the... These Arduinos can go up to 5 volts. The ones we're using, the SparkFun Artemis Nanos, only go up to 2 volts. So you want to use the red LED. The blue or the green LED probably have too big of a voltage drop, and we'd need to use some kind of divider or something, and it's not worth it. So we'll just um, stick with the red LED for this experiment. Okay, let's go look at the real circuit. Okay, this is the device we're actually going to be using. It's called an Arduino. It's not called an Arduino. It's called a SparkFun Artemis Nano. So it's got some nice features, which I'll elaborate on as the course goes on. But the main thing I want to point out, let's see if I can get this a little closer. Hang on. Let's see if I can refocus here. Yeah, it's got... Uh, an input voltage, ground, reset, a 3.3 volt output, and then it's got a bunch of other data pins. On the other side, it's got analog 0, analog 1, analog 2, analog 3, and then if you flip it over, you'll notice it's got uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 on this side, and then on the other side it's 9, 10, 11, 12, and then more analog ports. So it's got a, enough ports for us to do what we need to do. Um, today, all we're going to need is one PWM pin, one uh, ground, and then some analog uh, pins to read the voltages from the capacitor <clears throat> and from the diode. So that's, uh, we'll only be using four pins. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and connect uh, a couple of those guys. I'm going to go pin six. So this is... Uh, a0, a1, a2, a3, and then it goes 4, 5, 6. So I'm going to grab pin 6 here, like that. And then the other thing I need is ground, which we saw on the other side. It was VN and then ground. I want to emphasize that it's super important that you get the jumpers in the right pins because um, these, these are very powerful microcontrollers, but they don't have a lot of protection. So that is, if you if you make a dead short... From power to ground, uh, not only could you destroy the this guy, you could mess up the UART port on the computer that you're using. So please be careful. You might want to test your circuits before you plug them into the <clears throat> power to make sure they don't have any shorts. Um, we have DVMs, voltmeters in the lab you could use to do that. Okay, so I've got a oscilloscope here. I'm just going to set this guy down. I'm I've connected the the two wires I just connected are are two wires connected directly to the oscilloscope. In fact, um, I can show you that. Let's see, I switch scenes to something where I can show you that. Here we go. So if you look here, all I did was to connect the uh, 
channel one probe and the channel one ground connector to the ground and to the pin six output of this guy. So it's just like we had it set up at the beginning in the IDE. Um, okay, and then uh, I've just got a plain, let's refocus here. There we go. I've got a uh, just a plain uh, empty program um, where it was just set up and loop and just like before I could uh, I could define uh, pin out and all that stuff but maybe what I should do is just grab the code that we just uh, created on Tinkercad and just paste it in here. So I guess I'll do that. I'll just paste that in there. Notice there's our out pin six, there's a PWM variable. It's got the serial code, the measuring code, everything that we were using on Tinkercad is here. So I'll go ahead and compile that <coughs> and uh, tell it to upload. So, oh, it says it's not, oh, you know why? It's because I didn't connect the wire. Hang on, I've got to connect the wire. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, let's choose the, oh, that's right. Okay, let's try this. Boom. Oh, I see it has the, yep. This, there it goes. So there are our PWM signals. Now they're actually on a real oscilloscope. Um, you can see the, uh, you can see the average voltage is measured by the oscilloscope and it's going up slowly as the PWM duty cycle increases. Let's see. And it looks like this is one millisecond per division. So it's one, two, three, four, five and a half milliseconds. So, <clears throat> um, at about 2.75 milliseconds, it would have been halfway. Notice it's, it's well beyond halfway at this point. It's going to get up to 3.3 volts and then it should go back down to zero. There it is, 3.3, boom, and then it goes back to zero. So, and you can see it immediately, um, more or less immediately behaves itself. Now, I don't have a capacitor here um, right at the moment, so it's not easy for me to show you the filtered voltage, but that actually would just take a second. Let's set that up. Okay, I wanted to point out that this is what the 1,000 microfarad capacitor looks like. It's, it's probably bigger than the darn Arduino, just to, for comparison. There's the Arduino, and there's the capacitor. So it's a honking big capacitor. Um, but the most important thing is I want to point out that it's got uh, a negative side. See those minus? That's a minus sign there. The other side has nothing. So when you hook it up, just make sure that the wire that comes out of the negative side goes to ground, and the other side is the one that's at high voltage. So we're not high, you know, five volts or whatever, three volts. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug that guy in there. Okay. And this guy will go to ground. Okay, so again, I'm going to hook the, the oscilloscope up to the PWM signal. So that's still there. But I'm going to take the other channel of the oscilloscope and connect it to the high voltage, high end, the upstream side of the capacitor. And there's a 330 um, ohm resistor between the PWM signal. So I'm going to come over here and turn on channel 2. And we'll look at that at the same time. So now you're looking at the voltage across this 1000 microfarad capacitor. At the same time, we're looking at the, um, at the PWM signal. Now let's see, they're on different voltage scales, however, let's get them on the same voltage scale. So there we go. You can see as the PWM uh, duty cycle approaches 100%, the voltage across the capacitor approaches the high voltage of the PWM waveform.
boom, and then it goes back down to zero. And you notice it took a second because it's a it's got a large time constant. So that's the way that thing works. I um, hope that makes sense. I was down here looking at I should should have been looking here. I uh, <clears throat> anyway, that's the way the thing works. I hope that makes sense. And uh, please let me know if you guys have any questions.